Good morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage, and I'd like to show you today how we're going to make an upcycled tea container. Upcycle with Decoupage is also the name of my Facebook page as well as my website if you'd like to order some or all of the supplies. And here's what we'll be working on for today. As you can see by the writing on this, I will be doing a transfer today, but I will have links in the description of this video if you would rather purchase rice paper with writing on it so you can just decoupage with that instead. And here's what we'll need to do to get started. I washed my container in hot soapy water, dishwashing liquid, and then I used rubbing alcohol, the 91%, because it removes any trace of dirt or oil all over the surface. And then I used the chalk paint to cover the whole surface. I personally don't recommend using wax over chalk paint when you're decoupaging because the paper needs to be sealed. So a lot of people ask me, can I use wax? Not when we're doing a decoupage project, we will use a sealer. So I put two coats of the chalk paint over my surface and let it dry. And then I got a printout from the Graphics Fairy and I printed it in reverse and you want to tear that out as opposed to cutting it. Cutting it can leave a ridge or a line. So when you tear it out carefully, place it down carefully where you'd like it to go. And I'm using matte decoupage glue, the matte finish, and I'm placing it just in the area where I want to place the transfer. And this is regular copy paper from my printer that I took to the copy center and had a laser print done, which just means you go to the self-service machines if you're able to, and just put your copy in and have it printed out. Now you will have printed it out backwards at home, so you just go and make a copy of it on a laser printer. Now I'm placing this over my jar and you can see I also put the matte decoupage glue on the image. Then I took parchment paper and placed it over top of that paper because I want I wanted a, something to make it a little bit more sturdy. I've tried to use the credit card in the past. I couldn't find my brayer <laughs> and I've ripped the paper. So I'm being very careful here and just getting all of the excess glue out. You want that transfer to be as flat as possible to the surface. I just noticed I'm saying the word careful, careful, careful. <laughs> I apologize about that. This is really a fun thing to do. It's not that difficult. I let this dry for about 12 hours. You can put this in the oven. I put it in my oven at 170 degrees for about a half an hour, but I put it in a cold oven set it to 170. When the oven dings and it tells me it's reached 170, I turn the oven off and I just let this sit in there for about another 20-25 minutes. Then I wet the paper and I used a little bit of my finger and then this is a rough wet cloth and I'm wiping away the paper. Just don't rub it too hard. You want to find the right pressure. You can pull that writing away. So just remove all of the paper. And then once everything dries, this is how it looks. I'm tempted to leave it just like this. It's really pretty, but I have got to do some decoupage on this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my napkins and I'm not going to separate them because I'm going to cut these out. Uh, I'm going to cut out a few images and I'm going to try to frame my title here, that transfer, I'm going to try to frame that. So I'm taking my decoupage scissors and I'm going to cut out some of the images to go around the whole jar. And of course to frame my transfer there. I'm also going to take some cone coffee filters and I'm putting decoupage glue down on those and then I'm taking my napkin and this will be a napkin that I have separated and you want to place the image face down. 
I accidentally placed the napkin face up, then put the coffee filter over it. This was wrong. Don't do this. <laughs> what you want to do, I was luckily able to separate it, is place the image down and place the coffee filter with the decoupage glue down over it. And then you want to wet it with some water just to make it adhere a little more. And I'll show you how we're going to use these. Now while those are drying, I'm taking a fan brush and this is the napkin that I've separated, cut out and separated. And I'm just placing it where I think it will look best. And I put it down on a dry surface and with the fan brush, I'm going to decoupage this napkin down. Now you don't have to do this particular type of process for decoupage. I'll also be using the saran wrap method. I just wanted to use this because there are a few curves here and this paper is rather large. So the fan brush is very delicate and you don't have to worry about tearing things. And the few wrinkles that are in there will come out in the oven. I always use the oven for my napkin decoupage projects that will fit in there and can go in there. And I'm also framing the top up here with what I've cut out. I'm only working on one side of this project at a time so that I don't tear anything. Then I put this in the oven and when it came out, here's how it looks. Do you notice how the wrinkles have all seemed to smooth out a lot? Now I'm just going to turn it over and work on the other side. And when I'm done, it can go right back in the oven. Again, I put it into a cool oven. Ideally, you want to make sure that the oven is just not too hot. And when it reaches 170, turn it off and leave this in there for 15 minutes. And now that this is cooled down from the oven, I'm going to use the saran wrap method, which is where you put the decoupage glue down, then your image, this napkin's already been separated, and then you place the saran wrap over top and remove any wrinkles and smooth it all out. And I took my coffee filters once they were dry and I used my favorite butterfly punches and I made some butterflies to go around the piece. I then put this back in the oven to dry and once it was dry, I took it out, I let it cool off, and now I'm going to cover the whole surface with one layer of decoupage glue, and it's still the matte finish, so I'm just going to cover the whole surface, put it back in the oven, and let it dry. I, I was so busy editing, I forgot to eat breakfast. I've just come back from my breakfast, and I feel all renewed and energized. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Uh, I'm taking a little bit of Distress Ink, and there's a link to this on my website if you're curious about it, because I just wanted to add a little bit more of a finishing touch to this. And you can use a makeup sponge, that's what I'm using. If you go a little too heavy, you can dampen the makeup sponge. I tend to blot it before I use it. I'm going all around the piece. And I'm going to let this dry. I'm not going to put it in the oven now. I don't know how Distress Ink works in the oven. So here's the final project. Everything's dry and I'm going to put a very, very high gloss top coat on it. So I'm using this triple thick and I will also be spreading some glitter over the whole piece. That's just me. I like a little bit of sparkle to my pieces and then we'll be all done. Here is our finished tea container out in the sun so you could get the full effect of the glitter. And I got a very interesting phone call from YouTube 
and it was all good news thanks to you guys thank you so much for subscribing thank you for your lovely comments don't forget upcycle with decoupage is on facebook you can visit me over there and ask me questions or just have a look around if you like and follow the page you'll be notified every week when i put a new video out and once again thank you so much for subscribing i will see you guys next week with another video thanks again bye bye